frequently described as volcanic and fiery by film critics. Italian actress Anna Magnani started her career by performing at nightclubs. Did you know that she was so sure she wasn't going to win an Oscar that she didn't even go to the ceremony? Let's jump into the video and see what went down and how she did win an award for being a good mother. Early Life Magnani was born Anna Maria Magnani on March 7, 1908 to Marina Magnani. There are some conflicting sources on where she was born. Some say she was born in Rome, others say she was born in Egypt. According to a book written by film director Franco Zeffirelli, Magnani was born in Alexandria, Egypt and later moved to Rome with her grandmother. Magnani denied the fact that she was born in Egypt, and she always said that by the time her mother gave birth to her, she had already moved to Rome from Egypt. As a child, Magnani learned to speak French and play the piano and the guitar. She was a lonely child who developed an interest in acting after she saw the nuns at her school perform in some Christmas plays. She grew up in the slums of Rome where she was friends with the toughest kids on the block. She enrolled at the Eleonora Duce Royal Academy of Dramatic Arts in Rome when she was 17 and often performed at nightclubs and in cabarets to earn cash. One of her friends, who was also an actor, said that Magnani never studied acting formally. She just sang Roman folk songs in Italian music halls and learned things as she went along. Film Debut and the Rosalini Affair Magnani was discovered by Italian filmmaker Goffredo Alessandrini while she was performing in an experimental play in 1933. The two fell in love and married in the same year. Alessandrini cast her in the film The Blind Woman of Sorrento. But another Italian director, Vittorio De Sisca, believed Magnani's first true film was the one he directed, Friday Teresa. She performed the role of De Sica's girlfriend in the film. Her next film, Rome Open City, directed by Rossellini, would shoot her to international stardom. The film had the distinction of being the first neo-realist film that was commercially successful. She starred as an underground rebel who fights against the Nazis in the final years of World War II. Rossellini promised Magnani that he would star her in a film that would be the crowning vehicle of her career, but he gave the role to Ingrid Bergman instead, which upset Magnani and caused her to end her relationship with Rossellini. Bergman and Rossellini were later involved in a romantic relationship, which probably explains why he chose to give the role to her. Magnani remained unaffected by the betrayal and she continued to work with some of the biggest Italian directors in the 40s and 50s. To get back at Rossellini, Magnani starred in Volcano, which was similar to Rossellini's film in the way it was shot. Both films were shot at the same location, and had lead characters that had similar characteristics. Despite this whole affair, Magnani said she considered Rossellini the greatest director she ever acted for. Transition to English-speaking roles Magnani's role as a widowed mother in The Rose Tattoo was her first English-speaking role in a Hollywood film. It was around this time that she was called the most explosive emotional actress of her generation. She was able to portray emotions on the big screen unlike any other actresses of the period. One film critic wrote, Whenever Magnani laughs or cries, it's as if you've never seen anyone laugh or cry before. She won an Academy Award for Best Actress for her performance in the film. She was convinced that she wasn't going to win the award, which is why she was sleeping in her house in Rome when the awards were being announced at the ceremony. She was roused from her sleep by a reporter who found it very difficult to convince her that she had won. She said, You're lying. If this is a joke, I'll kill you. Magnani also won the BAFTA Film Award, some Golden Globe Awards, and the New York Film Critics Circle Awards. Her son, Luca After Magnani and Alessandrini separated in 1942, Magnani became involved in a relationship with actor Massimo Serrato. She had her only child, Luca, with him in 1942. Luca developed polio when he was 18 months old and his legs became paralyzed. Magnani was determined to help Luca live a life of comfort and ease. She once saw a war veteran who didn't have any legs drag himself along the sidewalk and said to her, I realize now that it's worse when they grow up. She was just starting out as a film actress when Luca contracted polio and she spent most of the money she made on specialists and hospitals. In fact, becoming a successful actress and making more money so she could help her son was one of the things that kept her grinding. Luca was wheelchair bound for most of his life but his mother did all she could to make sure he lived a happy life. For her devotion to her son, she was given the Golden Violet Award. Relationship with Rosalini and her superstitious beliefs Before Rosalini fell in love with Ingrid Bergman, he was in a relationship with Magnani. 
Speaking about him in an interview, she said, I thought at last I had found the ideal man. He had lost a son of his own, and I felt we understood each other. Above all, we had the same artistic conceptions. It's true that they had the same artistic conceptions, but he proved to be anything but an ideal man for McNani, and they weren't happy together at all. Soon after they fell in love, they began fighting and arguing with each other. Rossellini became violent, and he was often jealous and possessive. It reached a point where both would sometimes throw crockery and even pasta at each other. Both of them never stopped admiring each other, though, as artists. Magnani was superstitious, and she often talked to astrologers and asked them for advice. She believed in numerology and said that she was clairvoyant. On some days, she would consume nothing but black coffee and cigarettes. Her strange habits had an impact on her quality of sleep. and She often complained about feeling anxious whenever she woke up. She said, I wake up in a state of nerves and it takes me hours to get back in touch with reality. Death Magnani died of pancreatic cancer on September 26, 1973. She was heartbroken when she found out that she had the disease and was going to die because of it. Her son Luca remained by her side and her ex-lover Rossellini was also at her bedside when she died. Magnani was 65 years old at the time of her death and she was buried in the mausoleum of Rossellini's family. Tennessee Williams, the playwright who wrote The Rose Tattoo, was so upset because of Magnani's death that he found it impossible to attend her funeral. They had been close friends throughout Magnani's life, and there's even a play based on their friendship. Williams sent 20 dozen roses to her house after her death as a way to show how much their bond meant to him. Magnani was honored with a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame in 1960. What's your favorite Anna Magnani film? Let us know in the comments below, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button.